most wonderful episode I've ever seen. But don't ever do it again. <laughs> A lot of money, though. And of course, I, I am a bit biased. I did like Ashes, Ashes, which was. <laughs> Concerned with as much as I submitted the storyline, and the screenplay was written by a man called Darrell Royce Craze. And that was strange because um, on that show we had our lighting cameraman, it was a, a wonderful cameraman called Bradford Mays. And recently I did a film up in Vancouver. Yes, Vancouver, with Donna Mills. Uh, I'm so confused. I've been so many places recently. I'm sorry. But I do know now I'm in LA. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, and I, I did this film up in Vancouver, and it was directed by Bradford Mays because when he left us as uh, director of photography, he went on to direct several episodes of The Equalizer. And Edward, my son-in-law, fell in love with him. He plays the Equalizer and fell in love with him because he was a wonderful director. So he went on to do about six or seven episodes of The Equalizer. And there he was directing this film up in uh, Vancouver. And Doral Weiss Craze, I think people say that, isn't it? Doral, in fact, he calls it Darrell Weiss Craze, which is even worse. And he, he had written a script uh, of this film, which I think comes out in September. It's a film, a television film. It's uh, for CBS. And uh, that comes out in September. The top title is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's appropriate. It's called The Lady Forgets. <laughs> and she's not the only one. And I, did a, and I recently did another thing which comes out, I think, on September the 12th or 14th uh, with Meg Tilly and um, a lovely actor called Buddy McDowell. Uh, he's a lovely, lovely man. And uh, it was interesting to work with Meg Tilly because I nearly worked with her once before, where she was cast, the original Constancia, in the film of Armadeus, in which I was playing Dad. I only played for her. <laughs> and we were out there with Milos Forman in Czechoslovakia, and we rehearsed for something like three weeks. And the day before we, the day before we were due to start filming, May went out, it was a very icy, frosty day, and she went out with the lads to play American football and slipped and broke her ankle. So she never did play Constancia. The filming was held up while uh, Milos came back to America and we cast the part. So it was nice to work with her long last and it's called Camilla. It's a kind of vampire Dracula story. <laughs> but uh, it comes out, I think, on September 12th or 14th, somewhere. Shelley Duvall. Yes, sir. Is there anything I'm disappointed in? What would the series be? Uh, I, I would like to see more progression of the character of the father. I think it's not I think that sometimes they seem not to be able to write the character of Father Wolfie Wallow. There doesn't seem to be much progression. You know, as I say, I get sick of... I, I, all the time I say, you mustn't do that, Vincent, and I'm worried about that, Vincent, but I never tell you what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> My advice is not usually very constructive. <laughs> and as the, you know, Father has immense connections from the world above, because, as we were told in that one of the episodes of Howard Gordon wrote, called uh, Orth, uh, Summer Waters, when I went to Bar and I was a victim of the McCarthy trial, and then it was disposed that my marriage to the only woman I ever loved had been annulled, and then I met her for the last six days of her life, and we wish we spent on the tunnel together. So it's quite obvious that Father had immensely uh, influential contacts in the world of love, and it would be nice if sometime we could use those. If there was such a, uh, an occurrence down in the tunnels that required his, his know how and his contacts that you could go above sometimes. I get close to folks stuff in this time. And it would be nice just to get above occasionally. And I would like, you know, it's, the whole of this series is basically a story about I'm not quite as well as you. I mean, Vincent's love for Catherine has never seemed to be quite fulfilled. Uh, <laughs> I always had the impression that fans would love it to be fulfilled. <laughs> I mean, you know, so if it is about other questions asked, then I mean, Father seems to be a typical victim of this. I mean, <laughs> the only woman he ever loved was Margaret, and because uh, uh, the fact that he was jailed through his 
so-called communist activity, which is totally untrue, uh, the marriage was allowed, and he must mark it until six days before she died. And he's never loved anyone else, and I would like to see him form some kind of relationship. I think it would be marvelous for him. Senior citizens who, like myself, are perhaps, uh, you know, looking for romance. I want to say that. My wife would kill me. Yes. What was my hardest episode? Uh, I think it, I forgot what the episode was called, but the one in which I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> I wasn't in it. I was in it, and sitting at home, uh, champing at the bit, and um, wishing I was down there was my hardest episode. I mean, I'm, I'm never happier than when I'm working hard. I love work, and I love development of character, and, uh, you know, so, yes, I, 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 I've never found anything difficult. We had one scene, I forgot what it was, with Vincent and I, where for the first time we kind of lost our temper with each other, we shouted at each other, and I loved doing that. It was difficult, but I loved doing it. Because, you know, one wants to get as many uh, kind of moods and, and, and colors and changes into a part as possible. And to play it all on one level is very boring. It must be equally boring for the audience. And so I hope that the writers can develop the character in some way to give us some more interest in the character part. Said he's selfish. People at the back, otherwise, I think I'm ignoring them. That gentleman there, that's it. Yes, it. Now he's putting hand down, my brother. Yes, all right, we came to you with pink down. Have I done any recording one? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, I'm not quite in the mood of, of runs, but I've done a lot of recordings. In fact, I spent a year at one point of my career, uh, around about 20 minutes, his doctor was summoned, and they said, you must never, ever do this again or you will kill yourself. So he sets off on his last hundred performances around England uh, doing his reading. And his manager, Dolby, noticed that more and more he was putting in the murder of Nancy by Bill Sykes. And it was obviously a death wish. His marriage had failed visibly. His children had forsaken him. Uh, the one woman that he loved, or thought he loved, was a woman, a young actress called Ellen, um, I forgot her name, but Ellen Conley. And she had uh, kind of spurred him. He felt that as an actor, as a writer, and an actor, he'd never done anything worthwhile in his life. He was totally depressed, and he actually set out to kill himself. And eventually the tour had to be abandoned after 70 performances. He never finished the hunt. And the day of his death, his young son, Charlie, saw him in the grounds of Gas Hill, actually doing the murder of Nancy by Bill Sykes. So this was the piece that killed him. It would have killed him much quicker if he'd seen me doing it. 
This here is, is quite an interesting record. I don't know if it's any good, but it's quite interesting. It's Peter Pan, and we were the first people ever to get the permission from the James Barry Trust to record it. And we recorded it with the whole family. I see there's Michelle, and Karen, and Yvette, and my wife Kay, and myself, and we all doubled and trebled roles. And uh, it's, it's quite a fun recording. If you like that sort of thing. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> then I, I recorded uh, a firm called Argo in England, and they, uh, they recorded the whole of the Shakespeare Calendar, uh, 37 plays of Shakespeare, and I think I was in about 20 of those. So I've done a bit of recording my time now. Yeah. Yes.
is a national pastime. <laughs> So it took a while to get to me, and eventually they cast me. I remember the man came dashing down, this ambulance man. He said, it's not the Roy the Trees, is it? I said, that's my name, Roy the He said, well, I want you to know, I'm an amateur actor as well. <laughs> trying to take photographs of me being put into the ambulance and you can't see me at all because this amateur idiot <laughs> They said in about eight years' time we're going to develop our flights, and I did almost for the day. And I started it for a while. And then after we done the pilot, I thought, well, I've got to be fit for the series, so I'll, I'll go back. Because I don't know if you've ever noticed, but in the pilot, there I am, really perfectly well, I've got to be I must have been very confused or something. So I went back to England, and I had the hip operation on. And uh, it was very, very successful because they had this brand new system where instead of, so I won't go into the gory details, but instead of cementing the prosthesis into the bone, they had this new prosthesis with holes in it and they just jammed it in and the bone actually grew into the perforation. It's a wonderful, wonderful operation, but except if you do it to the trees because the idiot was discharged from the hospital, went straight to a health farm to get fit, first day at the health farm, slipped coming out of the swing room, and broke the the thesis and the leg right across here. Now this happened to me on July the 4th, which is a memorable day for me and you. And we start filming Beauty and the Beast on the 13th. So I, I come across, I, I, I thought, well, this is point, there's no way I can do the series. Well, my wife said, so the, the they told me, uh, the Beauty and the Beast people, which are, they said, look, we have someone standing by the trailer bar, but we won't actually recast until he comes and meets with our insurance doctor, Dr. Stephen Arnold. And if he passes in fit, then it'll be all right, and otherwise we'll have to recast. And I thought, this is pointless. He's got, I'm like, I'm going to call to tell me I've broken my hip, this is pointless. My wife said, you'll regret it forever if you don't try it. So I traveled across, and I went to see Stephen Arnold, it's on the Monday afternoon, and they had to make a decision the first thing on Tuesday as to whether or not I was going to fail. And Arnold saw this and said, that's a mess. He said, you know, you walk me on that for months. I said, I know. So anyway, the studio phoned him up the following morning, and they said, we want to report. We have to make a decision now. We have a conference going on here. We want a decision on Mr. Treats. Can you give us his medical report? He said, yes. His heart, pulse is very good. Blood pressure, excellent. Cholesterol, very low. <laughs> they said, yes, yes, don't mind about that. What about, what about his hip? He said, I'm sorry. That's a doctor-patient relationship. I can't <laughs> Start walking without a crutch or a stick in about four weeks. So, for the first couple of episodes, if you ever see them again, you'll find I sort of push my way around tables and things. And then eventually, they seem to think it was not a bad idea that father should be crippled. <laughs> so, I'm now stuck with a crutch. I, 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 I still have a cane, you know. As someone said in an interview the other day, uh, what was it? Cane, but able. <laughs> Well, that's the whole dreadful story. Uh, but anyway, the point is that a year later, I went back to uh, the uh, King Edward VII Hospital in London, wonderful hospital, and the same doctor operated on me, and he found that I was in agony for the whole entire series, and I found out why, because the, the break in the bone and the prosthesis had to stuck together, and this leg had, the prosthesis had disappeared down in the bone three inches. So uh, this leg was three inches short than the other one, I was in total agony. And uh, so he operated again, and uh, it's been right as rain, I've been scuba diving and uh, water skiing and everything since, so it's perfect now. We do have a lot of fun. It, uh, she says there seems to be a lot of chemistry between the guys, we think we get on awfully well together. Which indeed we do. I mean, we all adore each other. I mean, I, I absolutely adore Ron because I work with him on stage and he's a wonderful actor to work with. And it, 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 I, you know, I love the guy and that makes it very easy, my scenes with him. Uh, and they're, they're, they're terrible pranks as all of them. I mean, <laughs> I, what happened was that on the, I don't know how they found this out, but you know, I read my stars on the daily paper. There's a load of rubbish in it, but I read it. 
And I've always been Gemini, born on May the 26th. Anyway, I had to go back to my hometown, and I had to get a new passport. And he said, you were born on May the 6th. We have it here in the restaurant, you were born on May the 5th. So I said, but that's Taurus. And he said, well, that's you were born. So anyway, each day now, I look at the sign, and whichever is the better one for that day, November, it was uh, May the 5th, and I was filming, and at the end of the day's filming, the whole company gathered around the little set of the wood, and someone brought on this huge birthday cake. The bar was made by a cat. This didn't please me terribly. And they sang happy birthday. I thought, oh my God, they made a mistake. They made a terrible mistake. My birthday is the 26th of May. But I went along with them, you know, and I made a little speech and thanked them all, all the rest of it. And then they all burst out laughing and said, you sick, and that did so-and-so. Because they realized it was not my birthday at all, and I was merely playing up to them, but it was a, it was, they're always playing terrible pranks. Right? <laughs> yes, sorry. Do we have any idea at the beginning of the series that it's going to be different? Well, yes, we had. Great idea. Uh, we didn't think it was going to be successful. We really didn't. I mean, I, I thought, having um, read the pilot script, I thought it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, this is the first feature movie. It's loud, like the French one of La Belle et la Bête. Uh, but where do we go from here? You know, we can't have the same situation each week of him rescuing this damsel in distress. It's going to be. But, but it's amazing that we don't have any parameters at all. I mean, the, the writers seem to be able to take off every week with totally different stories. Uh, and particularly when we use our own writers. I think occasionally when they get guest writers in, and sometimes in the middle of seasons when they get bogged down, they tend to uh, ask people to come in and pump them scripts. In other words, uh, people will come in, very professional writers, and say, well, I once had this team which I wrote, uh, this uh, script which I wrote for the A team. <laughs> and they didn't want it, but I think I could adapt it for what, you know. So, Why I look very much like this is tea in most of them. But and that, that, that's the, I think that's when it's the worst. We have sometimes we have guest artists in that you don't see again. They come in and uh, it's, it's very difficult to I think for you, our family, to to be able to uh, feel any kind of empathy for, for these characters. So I mean there was one instance last year when there was a young boy, and it was like the first scene of the episode. And I had this long speech to him. Apparently it was a situation where Catherine had been coaching him. And he had passed some examination and was going to some college on the bar. <laughs> we booked the first, the pair of first nights. Well, I met this boy for the first time at 7 o'clock one morning. And then I had this long speech to him. I had to embrace him and say, we're going to miss you so much. And it's been wonderful all these years, knowing you and all And I had this long, long speech, and at the end of it, said, oh, I don't know what we're going to do without you. And I turned on him and said, who the hell is he? Uh, 
very old song which we try, you know, whenever possible. It, it's not wrong for people in the family, whether they're male or female, to hug each other and, and, and uh, you know, kiss each other on the cheek or the forehead. I think it's great. There's only one girl who has the picture. And that was right at the beginning of the series when the whole makeup and everything was very experimental. And Vincent kissed me on the forehead, and when he came away, his two fangs were in bed. And so he um, 
They had a quite a few conferences and producers about this, and eventually they agreed that someone would always be standing by with a miniature spot whenever a round eyes are in any way down and they're shattered there, that they are lit from whichever situation. His eyes are now always well lit. So the makeup is just better lit or more like, but not the head has a change. I must say there are many times when I would like to see it less well when there is a kind of wonderful, mysterious feeling when they, the face is partly in shadow. But you know, obviously, all the time would be extremely difficult for Ron to do any acting with that kind of light. Yes, lady behind, uh, gentleman there. But the lady. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that, darling? Would I ever see the day when Catherine and Vincent's relationship. I think he endorses it now, you know. I think he does. I mean, I remember one episode that we did last season. I don't know if you remember, but I did have a speech in which I said to Vincent, you're not the Catherine, and hers for you is the thing that warms all of us. <laughs> rumors floating around about what's going to happen next year and uh, I submitted a storyline for, for the 12 episodes which I'm not sure what they've accepted but I'll tell you shall I tell you what it's about <laughs> well I don't even know if you can remember the last episode but <laughs> well what happens is that Vincent goes into his black back tongue and you hear this tremendous scream and Catherine goes out well, what happened was that Vincent gets himself caught on some barbed wire. <laughs> and actually uters himself. <laughs> Catherine then goes into his rescue. Now, please be serious, because this is the whole next season. <laughs> Catherine goes into rescue, she finds out what's happened, and immediately loses all interest. different and, and the different thing about this is the underworld 
which is totally different from any other television show, and this feeling of family that we have that we want to preserve. There has to be action, and there have to be lots of stories, very diverse stories. But I hope, and I'm sure, that if Howard is here, he will agree with me, we don't want the violence, and we will keep away from it as much as we can. Certainly, extraneous violence. I mean, there may be occasions when baddies, for whatever reason, they're trying to kill Catherine, have to be killed or knocked about by this. But we don't want just violence for the sake of violence. Directly from the telephone. 
And I haggled with Ron Carter about this. I said, Ron, please, he said, no, it's old hand. It's been said before that. So I said, if not, believe you me as an actor. It's an actor's dream, and I could make something of that. And I, uh, so eventually, after a lot of haggling, and we spent about a day arguing over this, eventually it was agreed that I could do it. And I did it. And when I did it, we had about 20 or 30 extras in the court and the crew, and they all applauded at the end. You know, it went very well. It didn't appear on the screen. <laughs> they always had the last word. They just cut the whole speech. So you can never win as the actor or, or the writer. Uh, you know, you, you write something which you think is absolutely wonderful, and they decide, whoever they are, that uh, it's not quite what they want in that episode, so it's come. Yes, sir. No, we have the same schedule for each episode, which is seven working days, and by that I mean we work five days of one week, we have Saturday and Sunday off, and two days from the next week. So if the episode finishes for, say, on the Tuesday night, which it would, then we start another episode on Wednesday. We went Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and two days on, come back for four days the next week. So you're always starting a new episode on a different day. But we have seven working days for each episode. Yes. Yes, I do. And I personally answer all of it, which makes it... Uh, <laughs> I write the letters I write are not as long or as, you know, informative as I would like them to be, or as, as, as loving or as thankful, but I do try, and I hope I can always keep that up. At the moment, I've come back to a lot of it, and it's going to take me a few weeks to get through it. But I think in this episode, uh, it's a two-hour episode, and I noticed that I don't, it's about eight or nine pages in the episode, and I don't appear after page 50, so I should have a little opportunity to sit down and answer me. Yes. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's a wonderful idea. Two hours to start the season. It's always wonderful. It gets people hooked on the word go. I think the quality of the episode is one of the most exciting that we've ever done. It's, it's really wonderful. Yes. He has to think about that community down there and how if this gets caught or, or you know, put behind what they may listen to Vincent. However, we don't know. But it could be possible that it would give away the whole of that community down there and that would be the end of that whole that life for so many people. That's what bothers me. I don't think he's just, I mean, I often gag and, and, and say that he is the typical Jewish mother. I don't think it's just that. I think it's, it's simply that um, he is advising this. And sometimes he would love to ignore this and ignore his advice. But he, you know, he, he has to. He has to try and uh, most of the decisions done in the farms, and you've noted, are not basically always far. Some of the minor decisions are, but most of them are maybe through the council, through the, you know, the board that get together and, and by unanimous vote, invariably, a decision is passed. Yes. Same episode, he was um, the lying the cook, you know, William, 
before condemning that gang, the whole gang, when they hadn't found out exactly who was responsible for the murder. Uh, can I go inside? I'm ignoring the side. Yes. Sold to about 18 
uh, foreign countries, countries around the world, which, and it's the first drama series ever that's been sold to China. And what about Russia? I don't know, I think it would go rather well in Russia, actually, they, they tend to like, uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, I think it would probably go very well in Russia, they haven't bought it yet, but let's hope they will. England has been the people who have been most messy about this, I think. Uh, I, well, when I was back there recently, I found out that last year, they started showing the series in September. They showed nine episodes and pulled it. And then they say it's going on again in September, on September the 1st, at 7.30 in the evening, which is a bit early, I would thought, but uh, they're going on at 7.30 on a Friday evening. And uh, they think this time they, it may last for 13 episodes. Well, if they do, that means they're going to show the first season. You know, but by then we will have had two more seasons, hopefully, and again. But I don't know, they get, on the other hand, they were the first to buy the second series, so I don't know what they're playing yeah, it. Actually, it's exactly what you were talking about, darling. Do you remember before? There's something weird about Maggie Thatcher. I mean, I've always thought that. But <laughs> she has tried to stamp on all violence, you know, which is why a good many of uh, Edward's equalizer programs, which are rather abundant violence, why they were cancelled. But in fact, the reason that she cancelled so many episodes of ours was because two men hugged each other and kissed on the cheek. Which is absurd because England is the home of homosexuality. I mean, they teach it in the universities. I don't understand it. Yes. I, I was sort of answered earlier, but I'm still wondering about the missing moments that the end rather than broken in on the Okay, I'm trying to get this straight. They ever, I mean, uh, well, Edward Albert's character and his detective and Catherine were about to get behind the town. They find you is what I prefer. Well, you know, it must have been totally confusing because the whole business, the, the character of... How does it hurt? I mean, what did they think of the whole thing? What happened? Well, we didn't know about it, you know. I mean, it didn't happen in the Los Angeles area. Oh, no, it did, did it? I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know about you, but I find the reception of the show in Los Angeles so dreadful anyway. Yeah. 
laureates in England, the manufacturing museum. Asking them if they could make 22 inch comments. To fit the legs in the barrel. And, and Durek said they could. But the final permission had to come from the war office and from Churchill. And, and Churchill agreed that these 22 inch comments could be made on two conditions. The first, that they were stamped uh, British made. And secondly, they were stamped medium size. 